Hey Washington Shellfish Questers, Blake here. I'm in historic Grayland, as you can see here. Yeah, it's about 7 p.m., real dark. <laughs> but it's middle of November. This is my first razor clam dig of the year. I've tried to get out a couple of times before this, but it just hasn't worked out. My computer still stinks, in case you're wondering how I'm making this video. I just can't do very high resolution videos, so as long as I use my old handy cam <laughs> and keep them kind of short, I'm a okay. Uh, but hopefully I'll get that resolved soon. At any rate, me not being able to get out here till now made me think I should do a video just about when is a good time to go razor clamming. Maybe never went. So I'm going to talk about uh, good timing to go razor clamming. I include like tides, all that good stuff. And uh, just kind of talk it through here as I go out there and, and get in my first dig of the year. I'm down the Pacific Grays Harbor County line. Up there is uh, that's a smattering of vehicles and diggers. Before I collected my riches out there, I forgot to talk about this in my clamming after dark video. It's wise to have a little bike light or something like that. This can flash, or I can have it be a solid color, you know, whichever way. Just so you know which vehicle is yours when you head back. Here we go. All right, as we walk down, that's my red light right there, so I know where my truck is parked. All right, I call this meeting of the Midnight Society to order. <laughs> All right, well, it's a beautiful windless night, and that was not by accident. So I'm going to break this video into two parts. One is when you're planning your initial dates, like kind of like when you're going to plan when to dig. And then two, when it basically arrives, when it's the week of, sort of, you know, how to make sure you arrive on the best day. So uh, while well, I'm going to look for clams here, I'll just say, you know, Fish and Wildlife, they announce their openings usually a couple months in advance. So for instance, I'm here in November, but they have announced all through the year, you know, so through December as well. So I can look at that and say, all right, which, uh, which periods of time work for my schedule? Uh, do I want to do it a day dig or a night dig? If you're brand new to razor clam, I mean, I'd highly recommend going out a day dig. And the times might fool you. So, you know, you look at those times there, and these are all a bunch of night digs. But if I could have made it early in the week, I actually could have caught some daytime. Because if it's like, an, if it's like a like a 5.30 dig, you, you come to razor clam dig somewhere between an hour and two hours early. Closer to two hours, the better, usually. So, uh, just because, you know, there's no penalty for arriving early. So, uh, you could actually get some daylight digs in in the winter. Now, for me, I tend to do a lot of night digs, and that's because I work basically 8 to 5 Monday to Friday. So today, it's like an 8.30 low if memory serves, so I can actually leave work at 5. I left a little later, but, uh, you know, pull it some here at 7. So I still got an hour and a half. Didn't miss any work. For me, it's a 90-minute drive, personally. So I'll be home by, like, you know, 9.30 to 10, so it's not even going to be that late of a night for me. So that's uh, that's a big part of the decision making. Just when does this fit into your work schedule, you know, if you're not taking time off, or if you are. So I kind of had this circled on my calendar, and I was actually going to go yesterday, but my wife ended up having a, a book club on Wednesday night, so I came out to the Thursday dig instead. And of course, you're going to want to check the actual negatives. So if you're new, again, like I'd probably recommend something close to a negative one. You can get clams on a, a neutral tide, though, or even a plus tide, like a plus up to about maybe 0.5. But uh, I do, if I can, try to get close to that negative one mark. You know, obviously the bigger negative, the better, but... You know, I get plenty of clams on even like zero tides, so it's kind of just make, go out when you can. But like I say, if you're newer to it, aim for the lowest tide you can get, you know. All right, so I kind of rambled there as I'm inclined to do. Let's take a look at these clams before I get into part two of the video, basically when the week of arrives. So I'm just pounding the ground with my tube here, trying to make a show happen with the clams. You'll just see a little pin drop, you know? You'll just see like a little inversion of the sand. I'll do my best to point it out when it happens. Oh, right, oh, you can't even really see it right there, though. All right, you clam. All right, let's see it. Ooh, that's a small clam. First clam of the season. Woo-wee, that's a little. Very small first clam, but you gotta keep all 15 that you dig regardless of size or condition, so. I will move to a slightly different spot because usually they tend to be grouped up by size. Now, you probably couldn't see it again, but that was a much better looking show. You saw me adjusting my gun there because I heard a crunch, you know. This clam is pretty much straight up and down. It's not really at an angle. Adjusting the gun like that will uh, preserve the shape of the clam. Oh my gosh, that is another teeny one. Woo. Well, they can be cyclical. 
And I am uh, so far not impressed with the size of these clams. I had a couple of buddies, one of them uh, clammed Capalis, and they said theirs was really small. So I was hoping coming down to Grayland I would avoid their fate, but uh, yeesh, those first two are really little, really little clams. So I'm gonna keep walking down the beach, see if I can't find something different. Some bigger clams, in fact. Well, there's a good one, look at that. Yeah, you can see that one pretty good. Now, this one's higher up on the beach. It doesn't necessarily mean smaller, though. <laughs> Dang, they're all running pretty small this year, although that one's bigger than the first two. All right, well, I'm on the hunt for some bigger clams. Let me tell you about the week of. So this is the second part of the video. So, you know, I got marked on my calendar the kind of weeks or the days I want to go. So when I mentioned that Fish and Wildlife announces the digs, you know, a couple months out, uh, they don't actually confirm them until like right before they happen. So like a few days before. And that's because the marine biotoxin sampling needs to occur. So Department of Health in cooperation with Fish and Wildlife comes out and samples marine biotoxins. So we're talking like paralytic shellfish poisoning or amnesic shellfish poisoning or even diuretic shellfish poisoning. I have a video on that. I'll link to it at the end. But at any rate, they have to make sure they're, they're safe to eat. Those are naturally occurring marine biotoxins that's when they're actually confirmed and you can set your watch by them and go oh okay great the week is here time to plan it out i don't want to go when the conditions are terrible i mean i'll clam when i can if i only have one day to clam i'll basically clam no matter what but it's just like fishing you don't want to go out fishing when it's you know 10 foot swells and gusts to 30 miles an hour clamming similar uh, cuz uh, there's two things that will basically drive them down one is extremely heavy surf and the other would be like extremely heavy wind and often they are uh, In concert with each other. So basically storms <laughs> more or less But sometimes you'll get a heavy surf and it can be kind of calm weather conditions and sometimes you have kind of calm surf And it'll be nasty uh, weather. So uh, here are some resources that I like to use so a very popular resource these days is the windy app and I gotta be honest. Uh, I know fishermen use it, but I'd say about 10% of the time it's like, I'll say dead butt wrong, uh, you know, because I don't swear on this show. So very wrong, <laughs> like, you know, it'll be like, everything's fine, and you get out there and it's like, terrible conditions for wind, but usually it's good, usually it's good. So I do I do use it before I go fishing and, and that sort of thing. It's pretty rare it's wrong, it's a forecast like anything else, but sometimes it is. Uh, Another source is the NOAA Marine Weather Forecast. If you want to just look at kind of how the coastal swell is going, uh, that's that's another one I'll use. More if I'm going to take like a multi-day trip. Uh, the one I use the most though is it used to be called Magic Seaweed, and I don't know if they were either bought by this company, changed their name, or if it's just a brand new company. But now it's called Surfline. So this week, as you can see here, I had all the days uh, laid out, and all these days look great. So for me personally. I usually won't go unless it's like winds less than about 15 miles an hour and I don't really have a limit for the surf but all these days are great like you know like three to six foot waves that's like nothing basically if it's like bad conditions if you're a surfer it's good conditions if you're a clammer because the clams won't be driven down by heavy surf uh, so I was originally gonna go Wednesday but my wife had this uh, like kind of silent book club thing where folks get to rather get together and just read books in person but silently I guess and just have coffee and stuff like that so I pushed it back to Thursday which was totally fine and so as you can see here Thursday looks great as well and uh, extending it out here's an example of what a bad day looks like you see Sunday there uh, it's not open on Sunday but that's a day I would stay home uh, if I had if I could avoid it so if it would have been open on Sunday that would be a lousy day because the weather is going to be just terrible the clams are going to be really deep I'm not saying you can't get them but it's not going to be uh, a fancy frolic that's for sure so those are those are a couple of the resources I like to use of course just like checking the weather too just like whatever weather app you use in addition to those three sources oh look at that big donut hole that was just sitting here that wasn't for me let's see what we got Goldern. These are some small clams. Please catch me in the mints. Are the clams you dig in this season small? This is for 2023-2024 season. But uh, yeah, so far all four dug all around the beach. They've all been about the same size and they're all they're all like that. So uh, they taste just fine. They eat well, but obviously I'd like some real moss backs, you know, some real meat to bring home. I want to punch my tag. 
put one over the on the trophy mount over the fireplace, you know. Now that is what I want, but in living form. I think I'm at seven now, and they are all so small. Well, if digging small clams is an art, you can call me Pablo Clamcaso, because uh, they were not big today. As you can see here, I did get a couple of really nice ones near the end, but overall, a lot of small clams. However, I was able to dig them in a clear skies, almost wind-free conditions, starting to pick up a little now, but uh, great conditions, and it's all because I planned and knew what time to dig. Thank you so much. See you next time on Washington Shellfish Quest.